So I got back traveling a few days ago and things here are crazy in the sense that I got no PCs left to sell. Like literally this PC right on the desk here is all I've got until I can go and restock on the next parts hunt. So I'm running dry, not in terms of Gravis cards or anything else, but in terms of like things like motherboards and CPUs and our CPU coolers, I'm starting to run pretty thin. And so now this has led me to episode two of how to hustle where I think things are coming back into a seller's market. And at least where I'm from here in Southeast Queensland, it's gonna be a seller's market all the way up until Christmas. Where after that, you'll probably see things drop off a little bit. But today's episode is going to talk about one thing. And that is, if you're trying to sell a gaming PC or you're trying to hustle parts, it's not what you think. Well, sometimes it can be, of course, but this branches off into two different fields. And the first field we're gonna talk about is the actual selling environment and how you can apply that to that environment. And the first thing we're gonna talk about, obviously, is the PC itself. RGB, and we've said this in the past, RGB LED lights and even LED lights in general, whether you can't afford the RGB stuff and you just wanna go out and get two uh, $4 or $3 LED fans and drop them in a PC, that helps sell a PC. It's what the market wants. And for me personally, I'm really indifferent when it comes to RGB. I actually don't really care if a PC has it or not. If it has it, then it's a great bonus. I think it does look pretty cool. But ultimately when I buy a PC, it's not gonna be the determining factor on whether I buy it. Things like airflow especially are gonna take a higher priority than RGB. Back to what the market wants. And we've got here a budget case for 39 Aussie dollars. That would come uh, well under 30 USD uh, for the case like this. And now what we've got here is a blue LED on it and it's got a clean aesthetic. I mean, it's got a transparent side panel and this is pretty much for a base system what someone wants. Uh, I know you can spend twice this amount of money on a case that has no LED fans, has probably much better airflow but when we look at what we're putting inside, we're putting a four core and an RX 570. We're not gonna be dumping a whole lot of heat inside this case, so there really isn't too much to worry about in terms of airflow. But with a case with no LED lights and versus this one, if we put this up for sale in the photo, this one's just gonna be a shining star of, hey, we've got Christmas inside, come buy it. And that's what people are gonna think. People are attracted to that. That is what the market wants right now. It's not what I want personally, and it's not what I think, but it's what the market is eating up. So that's what I'm going with. The trend is your friend, and I've said this before in the past. Trend is your friend at the moment. RGB LEDs, or LEDs in general, are a trend that's going through the PC world. And this is important because sometimes I do get asked uh, on Twitter, for example, hey man, my PC isn't selling. Uh, what can I do to sell it? And they list the specs. And my reply will be something like, show us a photo. What is the photo? What are you actually selling? And of course, the description comes after that. But the photo, this here, and what people see straight away is the most important thing. And here's the funny thing. I don't like it as much as the next guy. I've actually called people out in the past that have taken advantage of the RGB and used it to sell absolute garbage. So please, if you're gonna do RGBs in a PC, try to at least make it a PC that can play games. So for me personally, I like to get the gaming PC that I'm selling usually, and then add what I call RGB tax on top of that. Now, another point we're gonna add before we case in point this first point. Hello, Brian speaking. Hello, David. Uh, Brian, there's Brian. Brian. Yeah. Um, my name's Colleen. Uh, yeah, which, which one? The desktop, the, yeah, the desktop one. And how much RAM? So the last point before we case in point this point is that if you've got a PC, for example, you're gonna charge 300 US dollars or around 500 Aussie dollars, and you're putting a GTX 780 in there and a quad core and an SSD and a hard drive, and it just looks like this actual case, it's old, it looks like garbage, then you might wanna think about going out and spending an extra 30 or $40, getting a case with a clear side panel, it's got some LED bling inside, 
And so that money you add on top can either do two things. It can get you $380 for your PC, so you could actually charge a little bit more. And again, going back to the RGB tax, or of course, you could just simply use that surcharge to sell your PC a lot faster. And in the past, I've done experiments with this. And yes, LEDs do sell PCs. Now, what we're gonna talk about now relates back to it's not what you think. Well, it depends if you're already on this wavelength. And that is with specifications of PC parts. And this is one of those things where a lot of enthusiasts know what the real deal is, but the general consumer eats this stuff up like it's the holy grail of marketing. And this all relates back to the bulldozer era where they were just simply uh, saying eight cores, eight cores. And even though that at the time that bulldozer was inferior to an Intel four core, that eight core marketing really sold uh, CPUs for AMD. And the reason is because people saw eight cores and they thought, wow, that's so much better than four cores, right? And they would go out and buy uh, the eight core over the four core. Even at the time, for example, a 4770 would uh, poop all over an 8350. There was no comparison for gaming especially, but people at the time ate that eight core up as if it was twice as good as a 4770. So you can start to see where I'm going here with this angle, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Some people are gonna think it's twice as good as eight gigabytes of RAM. So basically when you're selling a gaming PC, you wanna try and get 16 gigabytes of RAM in there. For me, it only cost me an extra 25 Aussie dollars roughly to get eight more gigabytes of RAM in that PC. And suddenly my ad, at least compared to the competitors, is shining out like a shining star. But the next area where this relates to is not only just CPU specs like the CPU cores and the RAM, but it's also in the graphics card itself. When people see the VRAM, and this is a big point. For instance, when I was in Korea, I talked about this, I brushed on this with the 1063 gigabyte versus the 1066 gigabyte. And I've had people in the past literally tell me that they think the six gigabyte is twice as good as the three gigabyte, even though it's only got roughly, I think 10% more CUDA cores. And yes, in some titles, if you're raising up the texture quality and raising the settings, that three gigabyte VRAM limit will become a problem. But a lot of the times, you're gonna be putting things on high settings, 1080p, you're gonna be noticing not much of a difference between the three gigabyte and the six gigabyte. But because that VRAM's double on the marketing, people think, wow, must be twice as good. And so as a seller and starting to detail these things on a spec sheet, you can start to see that more cores, more RAM, and also more VRAM really start to add up and sell a PC. Now here's the funny thing about storage. It's one of those things that people really don't care a whole lot about. Uh, as long as you've got one terabyte or a two terabyte hard drive in there for say a post $2,000 system, uh, they really don't care too much. I find with SSDs, putting a 240 gigabyte and a two terabyte hard drive in is a real sweet spot for higher end systems. And then for your lower end systems, adding a 120 gigabyte in there and even like a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte will really seal the deal. And so what you wanna do with storage is scale it to where the build's at. But in terms of storage, I found it's one of the least important things compared to things like the case, the CPU cores, the RAM, and the graphics card. But of course, the power supply, you're probably wondering about that. And that's pretty important up to a certain limit. I've had people in the past say, look, this has only got a 650 watt power supply. Can you put in an 850 watt power supply? And it mainly relates when you start going into higher end builds people start to care a lot more thinking that because their mate told them that they need an 850 watt power supply, the 650 watts going to not be good enough. And a 650 watt power supply, especially if it's a good power supply, is gonna power things like a new Ryzen 12 core and a 2080 Ti, absolutely fine. But anyway, while I'm here on the desk, I'm piecing out the last of my PCs and I'm thinking, damn, the used market for sellers is pretty good right now, especially in Australia where the US dollar has gotten stronger against the Aussie dollar. And so what that's going to do for the parts that we get in internationally, like your new graphics cards, like your new Ryzen CPUs, like your new motherboards, is that's gonna raise those costs. But the prices locally generally on used parts are still going to stay the same. So this starts to create a gap or an opening for used hustle. And lastly, before I get on out of here, the guy who laughed at me for uh, sort of this DDR2 and Core 2 duo pile saying it's not anywhere near worth $100. 
Um, I mean, you can keep laughing, dude, but I've sold three Office PCs already for 360 Aussie dollars. And uh, you can see here, there's pieces for another three. And to that guy out there, I mean, I've spoken about things like this on the past. You just let them keep laughing and you keep doing your thing, brothers. Keep on hustling, keep on moving forward. And now we're moving on to the question of the day, which comes from OZ Chow. And they ask, just wondering what kind of camera he is using to film and he shows it. It's a freaking pencil. And this right here is the DJI Osmo Pocket. And uh, it's essentially a 4K camera in a, yeah, like it's so small. It's ridiculously small, this thing. And you push it on and it turns on automatically and it has a gimbal which stabilize it left and right. So it's very good for mobile footage where you don't have time to set up a gimbal, which I had a gimbal in the past and I just, <laughs> it was hopeless. Like I tried setting that thing up and it took so much time. And then of course it was still hard to get shots. And so I wanted something like this that would get smooth footage when I'm out on the road and uh, not, of course, the time variant and the time factor is one of the most important things. So this little thing here, it actually doesn't cost a whole lot either. And the uh, footage coming out of it is really good in strong light settings. So in daylight, it's gonna give you really good footage. The nighttime performance is mediocre, of course, but that really, you know, at this price range, you can't expect it to do a whole lot more than what it's already doing. And that's smooth, stabilized gimbal footage and 4K, and I believe it's even got the option to do 120 hertz at 1080p, so it can even do slow-mo too. And it's just a brilliant little camera that I use now when I go on parts hunts or when I go overseas and I need to get footage, but I haven't got my main gear with me or I just simply can't get my main gear up in time to get the shot. And another thing too is when you're out in the parts hunts and a lot of places like don't film or they're just uncomfortable uh, you filming some of their prices and stuff, this thing is so unnoticeable, it's so inconspicuous. They're like, okay, what, what is that? And they don't even notice it's a camera, which is why when I went to Japan, I was able to get all that footage that I was able to get. Really good tool, I'm happy to have this one in the inventory. But with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us, but also let us know in the comments section below what some of your tips and tricks lately in terms of how the used market's been going. Are you having a tough time selling PCs? Or are you like me and you can't even keep up with demand anymore? And this is the crazy thing because up until now in PAX, I gotta get some uh, videos done and I literally will try to get in one hustle before I go to PAX because I kinda wanna restock and I love doing this stuff. It's so much fun. So you can expect to see a hustle out but it's just such a busy time because like, I'm literally like, you see, I'm making a video and there's a phone call coming in and there's people are that hungry, they're just calling me up about anything. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode of How to Hustle and basically with that thinking, don't apply your own bias. It's not what you think it is relates to the market itself. Your job as a seller is to give the market what it wants. And the market trend right now, as we said before with PCs, it's just simply LEDs galore and you want a good looking photo, a good looking build. But of course, you do want good specs within that, but you have to really start balancing the two. And that's something that's definitely shifted over the last few years, and it's more important than ever now. And I've had it to the point where people will be ringing me up and making sure that the PC has LEDs before they buy it. Like they've got to make sure that it's got Christmas in there. And I wish I could have shown you some of these conversations, but it relates to the fact that this is what people want. And so if you're a seller and you're not keeping up with these market trends and your thinking is like, well, I don't like RGB PCs, therefore I'm not gonna sell a PC with any LEDs in it, then I wouldn't be the one to complain about why your PC is not selling. But it is important to make an episode on it and reiterate that always try to take a third person's perspective whenever you can because it's gonna give you insight and put your own biases away. I mean, for me personally, when it comes to bias, that'll be everything when I switch off the camera and I've got my own time enjoying myself. That's when I'll start applying some bias. And with that said, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.